So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a tutorial on how to use spot trading on the Binance platform. Guys, Binance is my favorite spot trading platform. They have the best volume. They are the biggest crypto exchange out there. Um, and I truly trust them with the medium risk part of my portfolio. And today I'm gonna to show you how I use it and the most key and amazing features that I think really help you a lot. First thing you gotta do is you gotta open an account. If you look below in the description, you will find the Binance link. Uh, this will qualify you for any deposit uh, sign up bonuses. You'll get discounts on fees and all that, etc. And it does support the channel financially. So once you have clicked up on that link, it will then basically give you a page of where you want to register or log in. And what you basically need to do is you need to apply with your email and a password and you can create an account. Now, once you have created accounts, you're then going to get to the Binance dashboard. Now, if you have a look at the top right section, you will find the information section. Um, this is where you can go set up your security. Remember to put a second line defense of security. You can put a, a two factor authentication. Remember guys, right now your funds are protected by email and a password. So they give you three different features that you can use, which is either connecting it to your email. Um, so when you want to sign in, you put your email and your password, they then send you a code to your email that you got to then put in after. And that just puts a second line of defense. You've got the two factor, uh, which is the app you'll download on your phone. Remember to save your 12 word phrase. And you can also do this with your cell phone number as well. So make sure you have set up your security. And then if you have a look over here, you've got your wallets, you've got your overview, your fiat and spot. Um, remember guys, this is where you can track all of your funds. And to see the overview of all the money that's in your wallets and these sort of things. Um, and I'm going to be showing you guys very critical today on spot trading. So if you're going to Fiat and Spot, you will then see. Let this get in here. Um, you will then see your, your, your balance that's in your spot. You can see what you're sitting in either in Fiat or you can see what you are sitting in in your spot account as well. So what you want to do is once you've got a basic understanding of uh, how to track everything, you, you then want to see all the different options that they have. And the one that I'm going to show you guys today is spot trading. So if you go to the trade column and you go to this area spot and you click in there, it basically takes you to your home dashboard, a place where I spend a lot of my time. Now the top left over here, you will see Bitcoin. Um, this is where you're basically going to select your pairing um, of what you want to trade. Is it Bitcoin? Is it Ethereum? And then you're basically going to select the currency you want to trade it to, which in this case is USDT, which I use for a majority of my trading. You then come down and you got to order book. You'll see the current price of what Bitcoin is trading at right now. You then have the buying book and you've got the selling book over here. Remember, the price fluctuates for guys that are buying, guys that are selling, uh, guys that think Bitcoin should be priced higher. Guys, I think Bitcoin's too expensive. And whichever one of the two has the bigger amounts of cash uh, is the direction that the market moves. So this does play a role when it comes to bigger um, volume trading and these sort of things, which you'll find in further videos going forward. Now, if you look on the right of that, you will then get your, your um, chart. And uh, if you click on the trading view section over here, it will then give you an option to be using the tools which was this will load up shortly. Uh, it then gives you options to use the tools. So we know we use TradingView to, to draw all of our lines and use our indicators and stuff. You're able to use this as well on the Binance platform. Um, you can use all of your tools and you can add indicators, all of that, et cetera. You've got your time frames on the top. Um, just so that when you're in the zone, you don't have to go to two different, too many different places. It's all here in front of you. Um, then if you have a look on the right here, guys, this is where you're able to, to basically star and favorite the coins that you like trading. So you can search to any of the pairs, um, USDT, for example, I like trading Bitcoin. So I can say Bitcoin, I can put a star, I can then do Ethereum. I can put a star as well. And if I click on the star, it will basically bring up all the star ones that I am. Let me get rid of this. There we go. All the ones that I've starred. So when I want to just switch and change to the different ones, let's say I'm trading different coins and these sort of things, I can just click on all of the different ones that I want and it moves, it changes the chart and it goes directly into that token. Um, they then got this section, which is not important right now. Uh, the market trades just showing the orders that have gone through now. Then you got the different sections at the bottom. So cross and isolated, this is margin, this is basically leverage. Uh, this will be taught at a way later stage. I'm going to be focusing on spot. So if you look below here, it will show you the balance of your USDT. 
Um, and then it shows you the amount of balance that you either have in the token. So I'm going to be using Bitcoin as an example. You then got the two different ways you can buy and sell into Bitcoin. You've got a limit way of buying uh, or selling. Remember, this gives you control of the price that you want, but not the time. Um, and you usually use limits when you, you want to predict on where you know, the, the price is sort of going next. Uh, for example, Bitcoin's 20,000 now, but I think it's going to 18,000. And instead of me buying right now, I'd rather buy at 18,000. The problem is what happens if I'm sleeping at the time when it gets to 18,000? Um, I want to make sure it still goes through. So you will use a limit order for this. And what it does is it basically creates an order in the order book. And if there is another seller at that price zone of what you want to buy, at the time the order will go through and the transaction will basically happen. So if I think Bitcoin is going to 18,000, um, I can put a price over here of 18,000. I can then say I want to buy 400 or $390 worth on Bitcoin at that area. I can then say buy. This won't buy it right now. It will create the order. So you see here below, you got open orders, order history and trade history. You'll see once I've clicked that limit, it then creates this order here, which means it hasn't bought it just yet. It did take it out of my funds um, of the USDT over here, and it's basically laid it down uh, over here, and it's basically waiting in the book. And if there's someone there at that area um, that's willing to sell their Bitcoin to me for, for 18000 the transaction will then go through. Um, and this will only be erased once it's gone through. And once that has gone through, your USDT will then be, uh, it will disappear from over here and your Bitcoin will then arrive into your account. And that is the exact same way with selling as well. Um, is if you own Bitcoin right now and you think I'm not selling right now, I think Bitcoin's going to 25,000. You can then put a limit order over here for 25,000. And uh, if there's someone that is willing to uh, buy it at 25,000, um, your transaction will then go through and you can basically set this limit order for your Bitcoin over there. And uh, you'll see, okay, it's too little that I have in over here of Bitcoin, um, but it will basically create the order, the order book over here. Um, and like I said, if there's someone there, it will go through. Then we got the market section. Now the market section is the quickest way to get in and out of a market. Um, you don't have control of price, but you've got control of time. So what it basically does is it will take the nearest person to the, the closest um, to the current price that we have right now and will either buy or sell for you um, using the people that are here in the order book. So for example, if I want to buy Bitcoin right now, now we usually use this when the market's breaking out or these sort of things are happening. But if I want to buy Bitcoin right now and I want to buy, uh, I'm going to use 1%, so it's about uh, 60 or $70 dollars. Um, I want to buy it right now. It will go find someone that's nearest here and it will basically tally up all of this until I get $70 and it will buy from these guys that are selling at this area uh, and make sure I get Bitcoin right now. So if I click this over here on the market, it partially filled. So it was partially filled and then it got filled and you can see now I have Bitcoin. So that is the quickest way for me to get in and out. Now, the pros and cons, Binance is phenomenal because they got really, really, really high volume. So unless you're playing with crazy amounts of money, your transactions, like whatever you are buy or sell for, it should be pretty near the price where it is right now. And um, the problem is if you're doing really big amounts of money is it will buy up this order book and you may not get the price that you want. So you may be paying a little bit and actually losing a little bit um, because it's buying up the log. Um, but that only really matters when you're playing with a lot. Um, so market's an easy way to get in and out. And the same thing over here, the market's dumping. And I'm, I'm not happy with my position right now. I can then go over here and I can market execute out of, um, uh, of the position. Um, so that's how you buy and sell. Okay. Now, you also got to look at a way of protection. So sometimes I want to buy and I think it's going to go up, but I also want to protect myself. I don't want to lose this capital. I, I, I want to calculate my risk. And that's where stop loss and an OCO uh, order comes here into play. So if you click on the stop loss, um, what it basically means is I'm buying Bitcoin at 20,000 now, um, but it's a support level. I don't want to lose this area and I don't want Bitcoin to go below 20,000. If it goes below 20,000, then I want to get out of the markets. So you must never be afraid to buy and get in as long as you, you protect yourself as well. And by putting a stop loss, 
what it does is it puts a, it basically sets an order similar to, similar to a limit order, but it doesn't go into the book. It's not seen because otherwise someone can just buy it for cheaper or just they can get you out and you can go into an instant loss. It only triggers when it hits a certain point that you tell it to trigger. So, for example, um, I'm going to use, let me get some Bitcoin again here quickly. So now I've bought Bitcoin, right? So I bought Bitcoin. Here's my Bitcoin over here. Um, as I said, I don't want it to go below 20,000. So if I go to stop limits, I want to protect this Bitcoin that I've bought now. And the way I'm going to do that is I don't want to see it go below 20,000. So I'll put this in over here, 20,000. And then you've got a limit. And the reason why this is here, because it's quite important. Sometimes the market moves very quickly. And sometimes it can go directly through that exact number, let's say 20,000. So what they've done is they've made a range where you can set a range um, between. So that's not just one line of stop loss. It's a whole area. And what it means is if it goes anywhere in that area, it doesn't matter where in that area, like get me out to make sure I am out of the market. So I usually use like a percent or like half a percent as this little uh, difference area over here. Um, and if I show you, that basically means I'll be setting this at 19,800. So it's always a little bit lower, especially on the... Um, the stop loss once you have bought the token or anything like that. And uh, you'll see what it means is it doesn't mean it's going to sell me out at 90,800, but it will, it will make sure that I get out and I'm protected and turns me back into dollars anywhere between 20,000 and 19,800. I can then put 100% and you'll see it basically tells me my stop. That's when your trigger price hits. You got your limit, the amount of Bitcoin and the total in dollars. And you can set that in and you can see what it does is it does set this order over here. This does not go active in the book. Otherwise, someone could just take it and get a bargain. Um, it goes active when that 20,000 target is actually hit. And, uh, and that's how you basically protect yourself with a stop loss. Now, the next one that we have, because the problem is with the stop loss is if you set a stop loss on your Bitcoin, um, it takes away the Bitcoin over here and it puts it in an order. So if I showed you guys previously, when I put the stop loss down here, it takes this Bitcoin away and it puts it in an order, which is cool, but it means, okay, but I also want to put a take profits. What happens if the market goes up and I'm sleeping? I want it to take profits for me. So I want to protect myself and I want to make sure I take profits. But now the problem is you've taken my Bitcoin and now I can't put a, a, a limit order. Um, and that's where the OCO comes in and it's very powerful. And this gives you an area to set a take profits and to set a stop loss in one. So if I show you over here, there's that Bitcoin that I've bought in this area here. Now, the price that it's asking me is this is the limit order. Where do I want to take profits? Now, I think Bitcoin is going to go to 21,000. So I can set 21,000. Okay. But remember, I also want to protect myself. I don't want it to go below 20,000. So I'll put 20,000 over there. And then that limit is where I'll be setting 19,800. I set the, then this is the amount that I want to do of the token and I can then set this and you'll see what it does now. Now it sets me different orders here. It sets me a stop loss, protects me if it goes against me and if it goes with me and it works in my favor, it makes sure I take profits. So this OCO is a really powerful tool to use, um, especially when you're away from the computer. I've bought them in. Make sure you protect yourself and make sure your, your, your TPs are set um, there as well. And then you also got a trailing stop loss. And a trailing stop loss is basically a stop loss that moves as the price moves. So for example, if I bought Bitcoin at 20,000 now, and I think Bitcoin is going to go up, it needs to go up. Um, as it's going up, I want my stop loss to follow it. So I can basically set it at a percent or anything like that, that what it does is as Bitcoin grows by a percent or two percent or ten percent up, my stop loss moves up with it. So at any point it loses traction and it comes back down and triggers me out. Um, it will make sure that I'm out in profits. So I will do a more advanced video on the trailing stop loss, but do some research. It is a really cool tool um, that they've recently added and uh, it's really good. But my favorites, OCO, the stop limit. And I love the volume, guys. I think Binance is really, really, really good with that. Um, so guys, smash a like if you enjoyed this, um, this quick little intro. We will be doing more advanced ones. And remember, if you are opening your account, to use the link below. You'll get all the bonuses. It does support the channel very much. Um, I'm very excited and I'm ready to show you all the next video.